Hello and welcome to another episode of my uh, video blog where I edit various photographs of students that have been submitted for the previous week. Okay, this is uh, Picasso that I have open in front of me. Um, when you uh, open it up, this is what you see. Down the left hand side you have places and folders where all the photographs are. And what we have here is STJ, Spring 2017, which is for St. John's. Then we go into Week 4, which is the latest week. And I've got a list of names of the different students' folders here. So I'm just going to go down in this order um, and see where we get to with this. So looking at David's photographs, first of all. Uh, we didn't always see these in class because uh, some of them were submitted a bit later. So what we have here is the first image, which is a street scene. And again, using, uh, using the lines in the image to create a, um, a triangle. We've also got it pretty much anchored with the dotted line down into the right hand corner. The sky is really nicely exposed and really nicely lit. And you've got a certain level of layers going on here as well with the three different trees, this one in the foreground, middle distance and far distance. This area here though is woefully underexposed, so there's no detail. Uh, over on the left hand side there is an I'm feeling lucky button. So let's see what happens there. Um, very little. So what I'm going to do is use the fill light to add some light into this area by using the slider and just pulling it over, going to a, not quite a third of the way. And we find that although the sky has gone a little lighter, we've not lost too much of the colour in there, but this area down here has brightened up. Okay, first thing I need to do is rotate this particular image. Rotate it counterclockwise. The rotation button is down here at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to try the I'm feeling lucky. That's made very little of a difference at all. Again, he's used this, these leading lines anchoring the small fence into each of the corners. We have pretty much thirds going on here. Um, so I'm going to add some more fill light again. As you can see, that's really started to brighten up the area down here so we can see what's going on. Unfortunately there's a little bit of uh, litter there which um, is unfortunate but so it goes sometimes. So, yes so this, this this works really nicely we have the horizon pretty much on a third we have the canopy of the trees here on a third uh, nice image. Inside a building site uh, Again, I'm liking the angles and the lines in this. Very, very strong, creating some very powerful triangles here. Okay, I'll see what happens if I touch I'm Feeling Lucky. Again, very little. The I'm Feeling Lucky works on, it, it works on averages within the photograph and sees how much it can change in terms of lightening, darkening, adjusting the tone, adjusting the colour and contrast. And if it feels that it's pretty much okay, which this overall is. Um, all of this in the background and the middle distance is nicely exposed. It's just a shame that the, some of these areas aren't. Uh, so again, we're going to add a little bit of fill light, dragging the slider, not too much, but just so we, this is how it was before. And this is about, <coughs> excuse me, this is about where I would set it to. The final image from David. Again, we're going to rotate the image here. 
and again it works really nicely. I don't think this is quite as powerful as this one. I think this one works really well. Um, but even so, still needs a little bit of fill light to... Or would we? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. But we do have some lines going on here. It is quite a strong image. So those are David's. Moving on to Rahana's images. We discussed this one in class. Really nice image. I think she said this one was taken by her son. Um, one problem with this is that the horizon isn't straight. What we can do to change the horizon, if we look over here on the left hand side, there is a, a, a button here which says straighten. Click on that and it creates a grid over the image. And again there is another slider which allows you to start to slowly rotate the image. If we move it to the left, uh, move it to the right, the image goes even further. So this is how it was. Let's move it to the left and we can straighten the image there. I think that's about right now. So if we apply that, I think that works really well. It's a really nice, lit, nice image. It's very muted in the way it's been shot. It may have had a filter put over it on the mobile phone if it was taken with a phone. I love this line here of this track leading you into the distance. Works very, very well. I might have been tempted to have cropped it over onto this side, but the way it was, so if we undo the straighten, we might have, by cropping it here, we would have had been able to anchor it in the in, anchor this path into the corner, and still had some of this edge here. By straightening it, we wouldn't have that opportunity. It would be straight up the side. So I think I'd be tempted to leave this as it is now. Maybe tempted to add a little bit of fill light, just to brighten some of these areas here, but only a touch. This image I absolutely adore. There's so many lines and triangles leading you into the image here. You have this very hidden person. If we zoom into this, you can see the person is hiding. Very clever. But it's a very powerful image as a result. <clears throat> you have thirds going on here as well. Um, work, just works very, very well. Lots of triangles. Super. We had some debating class about this. I like the image, but I was unsure about this because of the, um, the path here. Finishing. It just seems a little bit incomplete. Although someone in class suggested that the textured area here works very nicely. I'm going to do what's called a manual crop on this to show you where I would have cropped it if I was, uh, if this was my image. And I would bring it down to about there, just to about there, so if we crop that. And I think that works much better as an image. We still have the path leading us into the distance. Uh, we still have a pretty much a third going on here. The tree is pretty much over on one third as well. This, is, this isn't quite anchoring us in the corner, but it still works well as a powerful line of force into the image. Let's just undo the crop. That's how it was before. And that's how my suggested crop. It would be an individual preference at the end of the day. This is still a nice image. I do like all the colours and the texture in here as well. One thing you might consider is changing it to black and white. Now across the tab, these tabs over on the left hand side, you've got different options. 
this little spanner is what they call the commonly needed fixers and these are ones you would use all the time. Then you have some fine tuning options. Again you can add some fill light if you want to or you can alter the highlights, increase the shadows which darkens areas of the image but you can also work on colour temperature. This is something I'm going to come back to in, the, uh, in another image. You also have these fun and useful image processing options where you can sharpen the image, add a sepia tone, change it to black and white, um, there's adding saturation as well. Just changing this to black and white also gives this a really nice feel. Because the colours are all very similar there is nothing that stands out. Sometimes changing it to black and white can really help with the image. Again this would be a personal preference on this one. I do like the colour though. This image I absolutely adore as well. The limitation on the colours works really well. What we have is blue, white, sandstone and red. There's a little bit of grey here but it's hardly noticeable. Just by having these three, col three of them, four colours in the image simplifies it significantly. You've anchored the image down in this particular, in the right hand corner so that's leading you in. The lady is very close to being on a third here. Very powerful. Love this image a lot. This was an interesting one. Um, again, you've got triangles and leading lines leading into the person who looks like she's taking a photograph looking out of the image there. Uh, we have the horizon on one third, which works really well. This tree is pretty much onto one third, or within one third of the image. So it's a very strong image. I wouldn't change this in any way at all. Again, back to this path. With this, I think this all this space here, although we do negative space does work sometimes, I'm not sure it does here. And I do wonder whether uh, cropping the image would work better. So if I go to the commonly needed fixes and go for a crop, oops, going to start off in the top right hand top left hand corner, bring this down, and I'd be tempted to finish the crop about probably about there so what we now have is the horizon on one third the path although it's leading you from the middle it's leading you onto pretty much onto one third where this couple are and the couple are a lot more noticeable now as well again you still have this tree anchoring you in and leading you into the image as well And again, because this is kind of muted, I hesitate to use the word dull because it's not a dull image. Uh, dull has a negative connotation, but there isn't a huge amount of colour or saturation or vibrance to the image. So again, converting this to black and white might help this a lot, and I think it does. If we add a little bit of fill light, and also increase those shadows a little bit as well. So we've increased the whites and increased the blacks. So we're, what we're doing is adding some contrast to the image. I think that's made that a lot stronger as an image. I think this one works better in black and white than the other one did. And finally, we have Manchester City Centre. This is Manchester Art Gallery, where we're going to be meeting to go and look at the exhibition. Love the lines in this, anchoring it into the corner with the tram line works really well. I think the only thing that doesn't work well here is this lamp post. So what again, what I would suggest we do here is crop this. I'm going to crop it about here. So pull that down. There we go. Ah, well, a slight problem with that. So if we recrop this, what we're going to do is move this up slightly. So it's anchoring that into the corner. 
there we go. Now that the line of the tram track is now back into the corner, we've got rid of the lamp post, makes it a, a slight improvement on the image. The Manchester Art Gallery itself is looking a bit dull, so we're going to increase, add a little bit of fill light, not much, just to lift it a little bit. There we go, that's all it needed, so if I undo that and redo it, you can see the difference that that's made. Okay, so that is Rahana's images. Let's look at Anissa's images. Okay. I do like this. I like the idea of these lines leading you into the distance, although the subject matter here is obviously the children playing. I think this one works really well. The child in the foreground running, you've got a sense of movement, a sense of happiness. These children are pretty much on one third here as well. It's a shame his, his other hand is cut off. It would have been nice to have seen him more complete as it were, but it still works well. And he's looking out into the image along, pretty much along this line here. Might be tempted to brighten it a little bit, add a little bit of fill light. There we go. But yes, I do like this image a lot. Um, we need to rotate this image. Again, we go to the rotate counterclockwise. Anchoring into the corner, leading into the children. Um, not sh quite sure this works as well as the previous image though. I think this is a really strong image. Again, it's this this boy in the foreground that really makes this. Uh, this is a nice image. Again, it's pretty much down and in, broken into thirds with the uh, horizon and the uh, far distance. The middle distance is obviously this pond or lake, and you at the foreground is this uh, this particular swan and the shoreline here. It isn't quite straight though, it doesn't look to be straight, so it does need to be altered a little bit here. There we go. No, it's straighter. I wouldn't change any of the darkness here. I think the shadow works really well with this. The sunset is pretty much on a on the left hand vertical third. We've got thirds going on here. Nice image, really nice. Again, I'm not quite sure this works so well. Um, in comparison to this image, which I, as I, again I come back to because it is such a strong image. So I'm going to pass on that one. Okay. This could have been. A, I hesitate on this. I do like it, but it's. There's so much. Get, the, the attention was really on the tree but they were distracted by these buildings here on the left hand side. I think the, the building here is fine, we can, see too, we can see more of it, but this is just a distraction. So I'd be tempted to crop that out at about there. Crop that out. I think that now works a lot better. One advantage is that the tree is on the left hand vertical third. It is a little bit dull though here because the camera is exposed for the sky. So if we add some fill light, this now brightens this part of the image, which is the tree, which is what you're, you're interested in really. But that's great. Okay, I think when this was presented, it this was actually presented like this. Well, I wonder whether having it like that would work better. I'm going to leave it like that because that's how it was suggested. or well, that's how it looked when I uh, looked on the computer. Um, I like it. It's interesting. I like the texture that we've got going on here. Lots of... Um, uh, this fan shape works really nicely. It would have been nice if you'd got 
the uh, corner here in and again this particular corner but I do like it and I wonder whether if we click on I'm feeling lucky here see the difference that that has made on this particular image there it's looking it looks good but it's looking a little bit flat the I'm feeling lucky has added contrast and it's added brightness to the image but because there's so little colour in this I wonder whether changing it to black and white would make a difference again this would be an individual preference on this I think I like the black and white on this I think that works really nicely but yeah just be careful when you're taking photographs of something like this this everything is in the way you want it to be okay uh, final image here um, again I like this because the, the tree uh, this is what's called a Dutch tilt and I like the idea of the tree being anchored into the corner uh, that works really well and works well with this parallel line here so again you're creating some triangles and some nice shapes go, uh, along this particular image nothing much you could do with this I don't think I'm feel oh I'm feeling looking made quite a difference it's warmed the warmified the image it's probably better closer to how it looks as well especially the houses down in the bottom okay so looking at Pax images this was quite super I was so impressed with this uh, image uh, I like the way the uh, everything is leading you off into the distance uh, the edge here this footpath is on one third the horizon is pretty much in the middle and that's giving us a symmetrical feel with the uh, with the reflection of the trees and the buildings etc very strong very powerful image I love the way it's been cropped as well because that's making uh, that lesser box crop is condensing the amount of information that we're looking at simple and very effective uh, this chap is in one third the dog is close to being in a third um, and our attention is drawn to these two people because the head and the red bandana here are the lightest parts of the image pretty much so you're always attracted to those lightest parts of the image I love the use of negative space here but I wonder whether it's actually too much by cropping it slightly to about there no no I think I'm, I'm going to stick with this I think this although I suggested cropping it when we were in class cropping it would be a good option I'm now less convinced of it the but even so so you you it's simple because you've got you've got your rule of thirds you've got a third which is the far distance of the trees the middle distance is this hedge the closer area the grass each one is in a third pretty closely you have an interest in the guy taking the dog for a walk it's a shame we can't see his face a little more but even so just having these two objects in here has made it very simple A very unusual view of Manchester even more unusual because I believe it was taken at um, oh, it was taken at 1020 in the morning so this has worked really nicely no people in, a, in it at all this near area I think needs a little bit of light to it so I'm gonna bring up the fill light a little bit what's so strong here is that this bench is anchoring the image into the corner although again I'm tempted to crop off a little bit on the right hand side because this tree is superfluous really the we don't need all this building in so if we go for a manual crop start over on the left hand corner and we take it to about let's try there 
I think that works really, really well now. Let's see the before again. Let's, there it is afterwards. That has become a much stronger image. Again, rule of thirds. We've got a third of the sky, a third of the buildings, and a third of this bench in the foreground, which is creating a nice strong triangle, anchored in the bottom right-hand corner, leading you into the image. You've got another triangle going on here as well. Very powerful. And this was fun. Again, I might be tempted to crop this a little bit. If we, I think the area at the bottom, where we have the Morrison sign, is again superfluous. I don't think it works. So let's try that. Yeah, I think that works much better now. Definitely works much better. I might even be able, might even be tempted to move this corner in a little bit to get rid of the yeah so what we're now seeing is that the, the bird is over on the left hand side the bird is looking into the negative space I'm liking this line here this gives it so much power this solid line that it's sat on I think this works really well you could do with a little bit of light adding to it maybe let's try the I'm feeling lucky that's made no difference at all, so we wouldn't do that. Uh, so just add a little bit of fill light. There we go. Works great. So those are Pax images. Add his images. I love this a lot. I think it works really well. Uh, whereas the other uh, cherry blossom tree that we saw before, I think it was Anissa's, it was looking a bit dull. But what we've got here is the light going right through and we're picking up all the colour and the wonderful blue tones in the background as well. I wouldn't touch this image at all. I think it's great. And again with this, I don't think I would be tempted to touch this much. It's a shame that it didn't leave the plane to go a little bit further through the chimney. But I'm liking the way this is on a third. You've got a very powerful triangle here. This is a, such a great image. Uh, there's a little bit of a black there. I'm not sure what that is. So maybe if we crop it very slightly. I, one thing I suggested in class was about cropping it to there. But again, that would be an individual choice. The, the chimney is now not quite on a third, so it may not work quite so well. Yeah, I think I, it's, it's going to be a difficult one, this one, but it's still a very strong, very powerful image. Loving the colours in it. The colours, because you've only got the white, the um, red of the brick, and the blue, it just makes it so much, such a strong image. Obviously, you've got some shadow going on here as well, but it's great. Do like this. Uh, this is a restaurant window. Another self-portrait to to an extent. Um, what I would do here, I think I think there's a bit of wasted space down at the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'd be tempted to crop this so that we're then seeing the window sill actually on one third, like that. I think that now makes for a much stronger image. Loving the colours going on here. Again, quite simple in terms of the colouring. The reflection works really nicely as well. Now, as you can tell in this image, it's got quite a blue tone to it. This is, a this is as a result of the time of day that it was taken and the clouds and the camera's not been able to compensate correctly for it so what we can do here is if we go to the finely tuned lighting and colour fixers we have something called a neutral colour picker which allows you to pick out a neutral grey which is what this path could be and uh, what it will do is alter the colour temperature and remove the colour casts so what we could do is try 
clicking on this, oh, that's made it much, much warmer. Probably a little too yellow. So if we now go back to the colour picker again and go for the sky this time, we'll go, we'll go for the building. <clears throat> that's probably a little bit better. A little bit warmer. And then if we click on I'm feeling lucky, oh, it still wants to go back to that bluey purple colour. So I'm, doing, I'm feeling lucky. I think this looks a lot warmer now, a lot nicer. But I, these lines here, leading to three people, work so well. Such a strong image. Okay. Again, we've got this um, bluey-purple tone going on. This is just down to the time of day. So again, I'm going to try the colour picker. See what happens. Just looking for things which are over. Ooh, that's a little too much. So we go for that. Go for the grey of the tiles. No, it's just too much. I think what we're going to do is just go back to the original and just alter the colour temperature manually. Now, the colour temperature, different times of day, will create a different colour cast on the image. And we can alter this within the image. By sliding the colour temperature to the, to the left, we can make it a much bluer image. This cools the image down. Conversely, if we move it to the right, we increase the yellows and oranges and makes it warmer. And I think that about there is about right. I think that works nicely. There are two problems that I see with this image. One is that the it isn't quite straight. And the second one is we've got this bit of a blue sign over on the left hand side. So let's straighten it first of all. By sliding this slider to the right. There we go. Apply that. I think that's a little bit straighter. Then we're going to crop it just to get rid of that blue sign down there. I think that works nicely now. It's a shame we didn't get to see the top of this spire here, because this this is, looks of a great deal of interest. It's a little bit unusual for a church spire. Uh, and again, it would have been nice to have seen the top of this uh, this triangle here. Although the edge of this 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 triangle is on the edge of the photograph, it would have been nice to have seen the top of whatever there is there. But overall, really like this. Going to add some fill light to it as well, just to brighten it a little bit. I think that looks great. Now. Again, I really like this. I mentioned this in class. Simple but effective. I'd be tempted to get rid of a bit of the sky here because um, we've got a th this is pretty much a third foreground, third middle distance third far distance. So if we were to crop it at about here. See how much more emphasis there is on this building in the middle now. Add some fill light. Or maybe even try the I'm feeling lucky. That's darkened it. So we'll add some fill light to it. And that's much better now. Much, much better. Yes. Good. Uh, finally, we have this textured cushion, which is really interesting. I'm just wondering how... Oh, this was the I'm feeling lucky. That's made a huge difference to this. Unfortunately, this looks like it's a little bit out of focus. A little bit out of focus here as well. Uh, which is a shame. Again, what I would have liked here would have been able to see all of the cushion. I like the way it's at this angle. I think that works really nicely. But to have seen this particular corner 
and I think those yeah those are pretty much on then it could have been cropped to be perfectly square and then you'd have these triangles on the on the sides the actual subject matter is very interesting as well I do like this I do like that okay so that was Adi's Im images Sahail's images Love this, love all the triangles and the lines and everything. I'm liking this dark area here. It adds a great deal of mystery to the image. Again, you've got some vertical thirds going on. Uh, very powerful. Liking these triangles that are going on in this image as well. Very good. Very, very good. I love the composition of this image. You've got foreground, middle ground and far distance interest like you've got some strong triangles going on lots of repetition going on here as well the HDR effect that you've created here is and again we discussed this in class it's of an individual taste I tend to find that it oversaturates and makes it a little unreal but compositionally this is a really strong image really strong. I like the way this is anchored into the corner as well. We've got thirds. It's, it works really powerfully. The HDR is an individual taste at the end of the day. Again, we discussed this one in class as well. And I th the problem with this image was that although it's nice, it fits nicely into thirds here, and you've got a good reflection, there's no real focal point on the image. Yes, you've got these two ducks here, but they're not, there's not enough in them to really draw your attention. There's no real crop that you could do, because if you cropped, you would lose the sky, and I think the reflection is, um, is important. But it's not really going anywhere. You've got a bit of a triangle going on here. You've got... Um, You've got the thirds, obviously, uh, but there's just nothing. It's, it's just a nice image. There's nothing standoutish about it. Whereas this, this works really well. You've got the flow of the stream leading you through a, a bend here. I'd be tempted to crop it just to get rid of this bit here. It's a little bit of a distraction having this area here. So if we crop it from there. And a, there's a post over on the right hand side. I'm going to crop it to about there. I think that will now works much better as an image. Um, it, it just works really well. With the, this is such an incredibly powerful line of force. And of course, because you have the water and the feeling of the movement of the water, it is drawing you naturally through the image. You have this line here, which pretty much is on a third. This is on a third as well, very closely. This fence is on a third. Great image, well composed. Uh, so Hale has created a circle around this fire. Uh, I think he said it was a barbecue fire. Great image. Love it to bits. I love all the colours. You've got some smoke going on here. And it's what's interesting is it's not all fire all the way through it. So you have some different things going on. The circle has worked really effectively in this case. But what I would have done would have been to have cropped it square. I think a square crop in this case would be would work in its favour like that. I think that works much better. Even so, great powerful image. Now we have a couple of self portraits. This and this. Again we had some debate in class about oops about these. I'm not sure about the foot being in this particular image. I think if there was more foot it would work well, but just having the edge of the foot just looks a little bit... It's, it's not quite there, but the rest of the image is. Whereas this one, the edges, the triangles are not quite as strong, but you do have this 
tree there. I'm liking the angle that you've got your feet and hand and things at. By putting the, the phone to the side has worked really well as, as well. So let's see. Would I be... I kind of like... I think I kind of like this one better because there's more, more of the edge in it. So what I would do is just crop out your foot. So hail. Oops. I need to change that to manual. Pull that down. Now would I crop to there or would I crop to the edge of his foot? I think I in class I suggested I would crop to there. I think that works really nicely. I'm gonna click on I'm feeling lucky. Ooh. Not sure about that. Um, it doesn't need any fill light, but I think it needs some darkening a little bit. There. Increasing the shadow. So what we've done is increase the darkened areas of the grass, the tree, the path, and Sir Hale himself. And again, I'll show you that again. So that's the shadow slider. So moving the shadow slider over, let's darken those areas. It has darkened this a little bit, but only slightly. So that's that works really well now. And finally, self-portrait. I love this. It gives it a certain amount of anonymity by this going over his uh, Sir Hale's eyes. Love the randomness of it. There's no real thirds or anything um, going on, but it's just unusual. Very interesting. And finally, Carmen's photographs. There's a lot here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I think they all need to be oh, going too far, going too far. They all need to be rotated. So I think I'm going to click on all of them. Rotate counterclockwise. Yes, it's done that. Right. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, like this, again, we've got this Sort of triangle effect leading you into the distance. This needed to be straightened a little bit. So we'll straighten it. And apply. And I'm going to crop this. In this case, I'm going to crop Carmen out of the image because I don't think this bit here at the end works particularly well. I think that's much better now. Again, I would do a similar thing here. Rule of thirds would work really well if we got rid of some of this down at the bottom. And I'm sorry to crop out. I feel sorry to crop out her self-portraits. Needs to be straightened slightly and cropped. I just want to try and get them so that on thirds here. This now works really nicely. It's anchored into the corner, leading you in. Again, you've got a line going on here. It's straight now. You've got a third of the sky and the trees. You've got a third of the grass. And then you've got this area down here, which is a third. Do like that. This could actually be some sort of social documentary image. Uh, it's a little overexposed. So I'm going to... Oops, no, I don't want to be going to crop. <sighs> start again um, with all these trucks going on here you've got the path that's leading you in but we don't know why all these trucks are here so kind of add some contrast to that so that's made it a stronger image again I like this little, this image very powerful lots of blues and reds and blacks going on here so it's a simple simple image in terms of the colors uh, going to click on I'm feeling lucky. I'm not sure that works so well. The blue's a bit strange. I like the blue in this. I might just add some fill light there. I think that works. I'm going to crop this bit out here. I don't think that works well in the image. Oh, let's try from this side. There we go. Yes, again, we've got thirds going on here. Uh, works well, nice colours, super. This is really good. We've got 
some very powerful strong triangles going on rule of thirds going on on the bottom third there um, wow love it to bits there's nothing I would do to this image it just works really really strongly again using these lines to draw you into the image it's not quite straight so what I'm going to do is straighten the image like that and what works so well here is that you have three one two three very strong lines which are leading you in the three together so powerful leading you into the distance see what I'm feeling lucky does oh darkening it has made that even these lines stand out even more so that works really well again kind of social documentary you know, with so many bits of work going on um, though it would have been nice to have seen more of what this was all about let's try now I'm feeling lucky again I think that works really well in this particular case You've got this line on a third, you've got this anchored into the corner leading you in, and these areas here works well. Now these next two images work well as a pair. This is interesting. Uh, this area here is on a third, we've got two thirds of negative space, really interesting. It needs to be a bit darker, let's see what I'm feeling lucky does. That's added a great deal of contrast into the image. Might be tempted to increase the shadows a little bit more. There, I think that works very nicely. But the difference between that image and this image, we have this. It's taken from a slightly different position. It's the same guy sat on the same bench, but here we have these lines, and these lines are drawing you into him. I might be tempted to get rid of the bottom part of the image. So if we crop the image to about there, we've still got those lines, those vertical lines, but they're sort of leading you towards him. And we've got a, is that a squirrel? We've got a squirrel in the in the picture as well. So two different views oh, we've got a squirrel there as well oh. so two di oops, oops two different views of the same thing showing very different approaches and work both work really really well again I'm feeling lucky add a little bit too much purple there so I'll add a little bit of warmth to balance that out so good so so good like, but I like both of them. It'd be difficult to choose between the two. Um, not sure about this. I don't think there's anything really going on with this enough to comment. But this is very good. Again, you've got this line, this path, creating a line which is leading you into these people here in the distance. I'm going to crop it just to get rid of that. It's a little bit of a distraction. just there and I might be tempted to pull it up slightly there excellent really really good it isn't quite straight either so that would need to be uh, sorted but I think we know where we're going with this this is when a shadow of a self portrait works really really well when you've got most of the person in who's taking the photograph so we have a single person walking off into the distance. We've got the person taking the photograph. It's going to add some contrast to this. So you become a little bit darker here. Add a little bit of fill light. Super. Little you could do with this. Maybe attempt to crop it a little bit. No, because then we'd lose the top of the tree. No, again, like this a lot.
In this particular case, this pattern is fascinating. We've got lots of lines and triangles and all sorts of things going on here. Uh, your eyes are all over the place with it, in a good way. But this, these buildings, are, again, I use the word superfluous because technically they are. Because um, that's not what this image is about. By getting rid of them, our eyes are now solely into this and what's going on here. So if I undo it, then redo it, hopefully you can see what I mean. I'm feeling lucky. Mm, I like the way it's dark in certain areas, but I've added that little bit of purple to it. So again, pull the colour temperature over. And that looks great now. Fabulous. The trees on the right hand vertical third. I don't think there's much you could do with this. Maybe you could argue about getting rid of this bit down here at the bottom to concentrate your eyes on the rest of the image, on the trees. Maybe. Yeah, I think that would work. That's how it was before. So we've got this light, this twig where there's a reflection here. Um, we're getting rid of those bushes. So redo the crop. Uh, great stuff. And the final image. Again, I really like this. Carmen could be our new Vivian Meyer. It's really, really good. What happens if I crop this to about there? then got a third for the footpath, a third for the top of the building here. Yes, I think that that works really well. Three, pe Although there's four people there, you can actually only see three of them, clearly. So again you've got that uh, odds and evens going on. So thirds, odds and evens, very interesting. Limited colour palette on this as well. Again, a great image. So there we go. That's everybody's images from week four. Uh, I hope you enjoyed looking at this. I'm going to upload a video in the next couple of days all about Picasso, so you'll understand a little bit more about how it works. Um, but the idea is that Picasso gives you an introduction into how to edit photographs. It's a free piece of software. It works really nicely. It's not Photoshop, it's not Lightroom, it's not any of those others, but it's a good free little tool and it's very useful for uh, doing quick edits like such as this and it's simple to use. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I will see you in class in about a week and a half's time. Uh, take care and if you've got any questions regarding this, drop me a line. Oh, 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 oh,